Make yourself comfortable. Cheers. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear, of course, what you both went through. I can see how close it got to Very the close. house, just looking out the back here, so, you know. Well, we knew it was coming, um, mm. obviously, um, through the alerts and the ABC, and, um, and my son was in the CFS, so he'd been messaging us. So we just had all the gutters plugged. We had a, we had a, we never had a written plan, but we had a verbal plan between us. We'd always spoken about what we'd do. Um, and the spray packs to have all ready. Uh, we filled the baths up, as Sue said. Yeah. Um, but one of the things which we didn't do is we had fire extinguishers sitting up in the cupboards. We Complete, forgot about them. Completely. Right. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that sort of cemented in my mind that was the importance of having a written plan because we forgot about the, some yeah. of the obvious things that yeah, of course, which yeah. is easy to do yeah. when you're Very so much. frantic. You know? yeah. Yeah. It was funny, we said, um, well, I said before it hit us, um, the, there's a big set of um, pine trees over the back and I'd come running in and I said to Brian, we're OK. The water bomber's coming, we're OK. And I'm going to cry. And um, it wasn't, it was the flames coming over the trees. <laughs> That's the only thing I cry about, That's so funny. Um, so yeah, there was, there was a huge roar, huge roar. The sound, the um, sound, the sound, the sound the, it was like a jet, yeah. basically. And, and then uh, that was it, all stations active. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we kept going till about four or five o'clock in the morning. So um, mopping up and clearing up, putting out fence posts, just going round and round and round mm. and on the tractor <laughs> and with the IBC, yeah. that's all we had. That's what saved us really yeah. though, yeah. the fact um, that IBC on the back with a pump, and when I, I don't know, when I bought the pump, I thought, well, this is a piece of money that'll never get used, but to tell mm. you the truth, it's the best investment of a lifetime. And I think we made the decision to stay, knowing that we were both um, fit and able to, to basically do it. I think that's, that's one of the um, uh, things that you have to think about, is how, mm. how fit you are and whether you can both be relied on to be running around and mm. cope with the smoke and, yeah. and everything. Poor our packers are in front. Here come the flames. The house was full of smoke. The, the detectors were screaming their heads off. For hours. Yeah, for hours <laughs> afterwards. Um, and tell me, Michael, you were in the Kangaroo Island, I understand. So now I've grown up in Adelaide um, and I still live there. But I've got family on Kangaroo Island. So my auntie, my uncle and my little cousin uh, live there. And in late December, um, they had a few spot fires on their property. And right. that was, you know, obviously quite stressful for them. We did one evacuation one morning um, due to the weather and that sort of thing and the spot fires around and that, um, you know, obviously keeping track of like the CFS website. Um, but that morning, you know, we were kind of umming and ahhing if we yeah, do we yeah, evacuate yeah. or anyway in the end it was kind of just like okay no let's do it let's let's go but my job was just to get my little cousin pack the car with the things on the um evacuation plan list yeah fill up the car with uh those items myself my little cousin the pets you know the dog yes. Yes. the chickens <laughs> um quite a packed car you know yeah. I, I guess you think of it as like you're putting you're going on a camping trip yeah. and that you know that's how much you can fit in your car I think it was very easy to kind of get complacent and think we'll be back tonight you know yes and so you know I, I did a majority of the things not everything pets items obviously my little mm. cousin took her into King's Coat and we were just there for the day and then didn't go back obviously it, it hit me the worst, you know, the next morning where we were staying with um, other people who had to evacuate, who also found out that they lost everything. And just mm, heartbreaking, Emotional. heartbreaking, yeah. you know, it, all they have is what I put in the car. Mm. They've got a suitcase with some clothes in it. You know, they've got a box with some food. They've got a mm. couple of boxes with some photos of sentimental value, you know, you can't grab all that stuff, no. of course. Um, you know, a few bits and pieces. But how can you pack your life 
into Absolutely. a car. How do, how do you choose? How do you choose? You know, pick a lifetime to put yeah, in the car. Yeah, and it's mm. you know, after talking with my family and stuff, it, it's not a, about the materialistic things. It's about you know the the items that hold the sentimental value and that sort of thing yeah. that you you can't replace. Surprising, the, the, one of the biggest things we, we rely on is the Alert SA app. And, and if you look on that site right now, there's been quite a few grass fires and fires already in, already in the state. Right. And it makes you realise that we're very, very close to, to being on its way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's one of the things we learnt is that you can't, can't expect somebody else to come in and defend your home. Um, it's good if they can, um, but you've got to ha make it partially defendable yourself, you know, I, I think. Um, or be maybe prepared to walk away from it and, yeah, and sometimes like your auntie and uncle, you know, mm. unfortunately lose, lose it. I think the main thing is, is A, is clean up. Yes. To, to keep the property in a, in a, so you haven't got tall grasses and we've done that by mowing the paddocks around us. Um, we've always made sure that uh, there's there isn't foliage over the over the roofs and there's clear space. Clean gutters. Uh, clean gutters from, from from that point of view. Access uh, is another yeah, one. Yeah. Um, one of the things we changed was to make sure that there was a and thank God we did. There was an access point for CFS trucks to come in and to be able to turn around. How about like a bushfire plan? Have you guys kind of talked about that anymore now if you it's, put it's a pen to paper it's, or it's, it's... I've talked about the having a written plan um, I think that's now important before it was in our heads mm. but now after forgetting a couple of things like fire extinguishers and the, the attic which we completely forgot about mm. is if we had that written down we, we would have gone through that process a little better talk to your local CFS even if you don't want to join them maybe get them to come and have a visit if you were buying, you know, somewhere in the country mm. and say, okay, what can I do to make make it easier for you guys, like putting the right fittings on your yeah. rainwater tank so they can quickly fill up their, their trucks. Have. And I guess the best way to get on top of it would be to put that plan into action as early as possible, as soon as the signs, you know, were there and yet yeah, don't get complacent. Mm. Very true. Yeah, yeah, maybe even practice your plan. That's Which definitely a good we, idea. We never did. Yeah. We no. talked about it, but we never practised it. Yeah. I mean, I knew nothing about that prior. I was, I went out one day with my uncle putting out spot fires and I was wearing my gel ASICs and they just, the soles just melted. They melted. Yeah. Well, I melted my shoes too. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, and I think probably in, in a new plan, um, I would have another look at our clothing because clothing now is nearly all composite stuff, it's, but it's all just melts. I think it's important that everyone, whether you're living in the city or whatever, is educated on it. <laughs>